Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a blessed and beautiful day today. I just want to come on and just give some encouragement today. I, I feel that there's many, 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 many people that were desperately waiting for the Feast of Trumpets rapture. Um, I had even heard, which I don't ever, ever, ever advise anybody to do this. You know, I mean, if, if Jesus is going to come, he's going to come. Don't ever quit your job. Don't ever sell off your house and everything because you think that Jesus is going to come on a certain day. Don't ever do that. That is not a wise decision. If Jesus is going to come, what's the point of quitting your job and all of that. Um, because now there's a lot of people that are without a job and, you know, without a house. And I don't understand why people do that. Maybe it's just the mentality of, um, certain people that are easier persuaded. I don't know, but, um, I don't ever, and I don't ever encourage anybody to do that. You know, it's it's exciting to watch for the rapture. It's exciting to listen for the trumpets. It's, ex- it's exciting to think of how he could possibly come on a certain day or a certain time frame. But certainly don't ever, you know, end your life as, as far as like your finances and stuff like that because you think he's going to come at a certain time. Don't ever do that. Um, but I feel like I need to encourage the body of Christ today because there are a lot of people that were really, really hoping on the Feast of Trumpets rapture. And though I do see a lot of mirrored things with the Feast and the rapture, it doesn't mean that Jesus, one, that Jesus isn't going to come. Or two, it doesn't mean that Jesus has to come on the Feast of Trumpets. He doesn't have to. There are, he can come today, he can come tomorrow, he can come anytime. There's, you know, there's nothing that has to happen first for Jesus to come. You know, his rap, his, his timing is imminent. Um, you know, and I know that there's a lot of people that have been waiting for years. And, you know, something struck me yesterday while I was kind of, in prayer and just kind of talking about it and just kind of to the Lord, you know, I was like, you know, Lord, you know, I know that there's many people that are really tired right now. They just want to go home. And there's a lot of people, myself included, I just want to go home, you know, and why, why is it, you know, people want to use the, the excuse, well, Jesus, or well, they've been saying for 2000 years that Jesus was going to come, but you know, There has to, had to have been advancements, you know, Jesus couldn't have come back 2000 years ago, as far as rapture wise, because the advancements in technology hadn't been fulfilled yet. The fulfillment of the Israel becoming a nation was the start of the clock. So, and with that came the advancements in technology. There had to have been a way for people all over the world to hear the gospel. You know, back 2000 years ago, there wasn't, it was harder and wasn't as possible to get the word to all the nations in all the world. But in 1948, that's when everything started to boom. You know, you had the airplanes, you had, you know, television starting to come out later on. You had, you know, and now you have cell phones, you have internet, you have the, the gospel is being preached to the whole world. So people that are saying, well, you know, Jesus can't come yet because the gospel hasn't been preached to the whole world. When in fact it really has, it's been preached all over and God allows you know, his people to share the gospel with, with everybody. And the gospel has been shared all over the world, whether by a, a minis, um, missionaries 
or by TV, by churches, by the Holy Spirit? Do you think that the Holy Spirit, that Jesus doesn't appear to people still? I mean, do you think that, let's say, like a tribe in the middle of nowhere, you know, that God is not capable of presenting himself to that tribe? That God doesn't still send his angels to speak the gospel to people? God can do anything. He's a mighty, mighty king. He can do anything. So people that say, well, Jesus can't come because of this, because of that. There is, that's just an excuse that they are holding on to. I think that helps them sleep at night because they think, well, if Jesus, if this hasn't happened yet, then Jesus can't come. Then they can still live their life and they can still do what they want to do. And they can still, um, hold on to the world because secretly they don't really want Jesus to come. They're kind of scared for him to come. They don't want him to come. And, and there are many people that are afraid of the rapture, you know, and I, and I've told you guys this before, and, but if you're new, I'll, I'll share it again. But there was a time back, you know, not too long ago that I too was afraid of the rapture, but my reasoning for being afraid of the rapture was because the enemy was using my past to condemn me, to make me feel like I wasn't saved. That because of what I had done in my past, um, that at so- somehow if Jesus came back, that I was going to be left behind because I wasn't, or that I wasn't truly saved or whatever. I was battling the spiritual battle with that. It, God got a hold of me. God alone got a hold of me. And I remember the very day that he got a hold of me and I was sitting outside. It was during the summer. It was in June. I was sitting outside and I had been battling this, this, you know, spiritual battle for quite some time. And it was really getting really heavy. And I remember sitting outside and the Holy Spirit told me to, to look at something on on my phone and it was a prophecy website. And he spoke through me, you know, just to gave me that hunger. All of a sudden, I just had this hunger to know. And honestly, and I can tell you 100% with, with all honesty, from that day forward, I have never been afraid of the rapture. I have been so excited for the rapture. I have, you know, not battled, oh my gosh, what, am, what if I get left behind? None of that. But I can't say that's the case for for everybody who's afraid of the rapture. I don't know why you would be other than, you know, if you are battling a spiritual battle like I was or, you know, you're not saved possibly or you're questioning your salvation. I don't know. Um, sorry, I got a phone call. So I am in a different location <laughs> than when I was in the beginning. Um Anyways, I just want to encourage you guys that just because the Feast of Trumpets rapture did not happen does not mean that the rapture is not going to happen or that it's going to be 10 years down the road or whatever. I can tell you for sure that the rapture is not going to be 50 years, 10 years down the road. We can see the things that are happening now and we can see, you know, the lineup of players on the scene. We can see the prophecies that are being fulfilled and everything that's happening. We can clearly see that it's not 50 years, you know, 10 years, five years down the road. Um, You know, and I know that people get excited for the rapture. They get excited to look at certain days and I get that and it's, it's understandable and I enjoy their joy. I, I get joy from their joy and their excitement for watching for, for our Lord. So I don't fault anybody for that. Um, as long as they say thus, don't say thus says the Lord. I don't have a problem with that. Um, once they put the Lord's name in that, that's when I have a problem. So, you know, when you, when you listen to people that might possibly be sharing, you know, a time frame of the rapture, keep that in mind that if, if they say the Lord showed me or the Lord told me, or the Lord gave me a dream or the Lord did this and, and we're going to be out of here by, you know, whatever time, that's when you need to be 
um, cautious. But with the things that are happening, like with Russia, you know, we have to we have to look at the things that are happening, let's say with Russia and with the pipeline and kind of see, allow God to show us what is actually happening. Because, you know, you see this, this pipeline thing and you see Russia kind of being invaders and doing their thing with, you know, basically, basically pushing people out of their own land, claiming it for themselves. Um, but, but, the big thing is the pipeline. So that pipeline is Russia's. Um, They're going to be looking for oil at some point. And where are they going to turn? They've already got their people around surrounding Israel. All eyes are on Israel, Hezbollah, Iran, all their eyes are on Israel right now. And now you have Russia that doesn't have any oil and they're going to be seeking for the spoil Um, because uh, Israel is very, nutrient in oil in in everything pretty much but in in oil especially and you know they're going to be the main producers in the end times so Putin is going to be looking for oil and where is he going to look well the bible tells us that Gog um is going to be go try to go into um Israel to steal their oil or demand it or whatever so that's already lining up. We can see that. We can foretell that. We can see that clearly, clear as day, that that's what's going to be taking place. Um, so with that being said, how much closer are we to the rapture? We can't, we can't be here when the Antichrist comes onto the scene in order to broker a deal, a global peace deal. We've been hearing a lot of talk and a lot, a lot, a lot of talk about a global peace Um peace deal this, peace and safety that. Um, We've got Trump coming in wanting to broker a peace deal. We've got, there's been a lot of talk about peace deals and where it, you kind of like maybe heard about it here and there and everywhere, but not, not the way that it is now with everything going on all at the same time. Um, You know, we've got this, this world in peril and people are just waiting for somebody to come in and fix this because they can't, they don't understand what's going on. Um, and we're, we, the church can't be here to witness that. And I can clearly tell you that with 100% certainty that the Antichrist, we will not see the Antichrist. So that means that we have to be out of here very soon, very, very, very soon. So I know that you're tired. I know, you know, dates come and go and you hear people saying, oh, it's got to be during this time and this feast and all of that. And it gets you excited and then it doesn't happen. And then you just feel, oh, you just feel so deflated and just, oh my gosh, I'm so done. And I just don't want it to cause you to turn your eyes away from watching or being excited for his return. I don't want it to cause you to question God, you know, and, and his timing. And I don't want you to question whether or not he's coming and the, the time frame that he's coming. And I don't want it to cause you to feel like, you know, to even to fall into a depression. Um, because a lot of people are hurting and they don't want to be here anymore. They want to go home and, you know, and I get that. I totally get that. I want to go home too. So just in the meantime, while we're waiting, while we're waiting for those trumpets to sound, the best thing that we can do is to just share the love of Christ and share the gospel with, with people. And, you know, of course they may have heard it because, you know, you can't be in, a, in the world today and have not heard the name of Jesus. You've heard it somewhere. Um, but as far as the gospel, a lot of people, you know, they equate Christianity being born again with a hate, you know, something. So we need to share and show these people what Christ is. And we do that by showing the gospel through us and sharing what he has done for us and share your testimony with people. 
because your testimony can save somebody. Your testimony can can cause somebody to realize that they need Jesus. So, I mean, they can be the worst person you you know they could be the worst person you could ever think of but they still need Jesus and Jesus still died for them it's hard to imagine sometimes um but Jesus loves them and Jesus died for them just like he died for you and he died for me so you know the best thing that we can do is to just keep keep on keeping on guys and know that Our time truly is at hand. It is coming. It is coming. I promise it's coming. Just, you know, we have to keep um, vigilant, keep watch, keep listening for the trumpets, keep your eyes on prophecy, and just know that the time is at hand. So I um, I have to go take care of the kids. (laughs) So I will let you guys go, but I love you guys, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.